Hey everyone, Mike here. Did you ever have a bad day because of the weather? Well, SpaceX just had a very bad day due to some bad space weather. A geomagnetic storm. SpaceX lost 40 satellites. Almost all of the 49 they just launched on February 3rd. And there's high potential that they'll lose more in the future. The problem is the sun. Geomagnetic storms are storms in our atmosphere caused when the sun interacts with Earth's magnetosphere, the magnetic field that surrounds the Earth and protects us from the radiation coming from our sun. The sun looks like a nice, calm, warm light, but it's actually a pretty nasty place with a lot of violent activity. And the two big things going on in the sun that affect geomagnetic storms here on Earth are solar flares and coronal mass ejections, or CMEs. Now, the two are often very closely related. One analogy that I like is a gunshot. When the gun fires, there's a flash of light at the muzzle. The flash is visible in every direction. That's like a solar flare, a flash of light on the sun, sending energy in all directions, traveling at the speed of light. When it happens on the sun, it takes around eight minutes to reach Earth. We don't really know about it until it's already reached us because it's traveling at the speed of light. So in our gunshot analogy, that's the muzzle flash. But the bullet firing out of the gun, that's like the coronal mass ejection. A CME is very directional. It's a big mass of particles ejected from the sun instead of a bullet, but it's heading in a particular direction. It's still moving very fast. It can be millions of miles per hour, but that's still much slower than the speed of light. A CME can take anywhere from 13 hours to over 80 days to reach us. And it was one of these CMEs that took out 40 Starlink satellites. Now we've had CMEs hit Earth before. There are always charged particles from the sun hitting Earth's magnetosphere. This steady flow is called the solar wind. What you're seeing in this animation is the lines around Earth representing the magnetic field surrounding our planet. A normal level CME will distort these magnetic fields, pushing them in on the front and distorting the tail in behind. The first recorded CME impacting Earth, and still the largest ever recorded, happened back in 1859. It was notable because it had a major impact on newly deployed telegraph systems in Europe and North America with operators reporting lines sparking, fires, melted insulators, and getting shocks from their own equipment. This is referred to as the Carrington Event, named for the British astronomer Richard Carrington, who observed the associated solar flare. You can see in the animation at this level, the Earth's magnetic field is almost completely compressed, allowing significant amounts of magnetic particles to reach Earth. A geomagnetic storm of this magnitude occurring today would cause widespread electrical disruptions, blackouts, and damage due to extended outages of the electrical grid. There have been many other smaller CME events causing power outages, disrupting communications, and even causing mines to explode during the Vietnam War. Back in 2012, we actually detected a Carrington-class CME coming from the sun that narrowly missed Earth only nine days earlier and it would have actually impacted Earth, causing who knows what damage. So with all this in my mind, when I heard that 40 Starlink satellites were taken out by a geomagnetic storm, I assumed that the geomagnetic storm must have destroyed their electronics caused by a massive CME or something like that. But it wasn't quite what I expected. With all this talk of solar flares and CMEs and the the impact of geomagnetic storms, I do kind of wonder if we're doing enough to protect ourselves against the impact of these type of things. I'm curious what you think. Let me know in the comments if you think that SpaceX is doing enough to protect Starlink satellites and the constellation. And just if we in general as humans on Earth are doing enough to protect ourselves against these potentially devastating events. Now, the satellites were taken out by a CME. NASA operates a Solar Dynamics Observatory, and they actually publish images and videos of the sun each day. 
I was able to go back to January 30th and actually see the coronal mass ejection. I put together videos from a few days, and if I slow it down on the 31st, there it is at the bottom right. The CME hit the Earth a few days later. But it wasn't actually that big. It didn't destroy the satellite's electronics or interfere with their communications. What it did was it heated up the atmosphere a bit. That warmer atmosphere increased the density. At the low altitude SpaceX uses to deploy their Starlink satellites, that higher density caused increased drag, up to 50% more than expected. Now, SpaceX deploys the satellites at a low altitude on purpose. If any satellites fail and they can't be raised into working orbit, they just let them re-enter the atmosphere and burn up. That ensures they don't stay in space and increase the amount of space junk up there. They burn up quickly and they're gone. With the unexpected extra drag, the Starlink satellites weren't able to raise their orbits in time. Even by directing the satellites to fly flat on a knife edge to reduce the drag, it wasn't enough to reduce the impact of that additional density in the atmosphere. We actually have proof that they burn up quickly. Observers in Puerto Rico captured this footage of some of the satellites burning up already. We've seen a lot of pictures since SpaceX started deploying Starlink satellites of the satellite train. This is pretty dramatic to see those satellite trains burning up in the atmosphere. Hey, if you enjoy this type of content, hit the like button down below. It really helps the channel grow. And hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notified of all my videos as soon as they come out. Now, I said at the start that this problem could increase. The sun has a solar cycle that repeats roughly every 22 years. Within each cycle, there are two highs and two lows, roughly 11 years apart. We're actually in a low point right now, where solar activity is generally fairly calm. As we approach the next peak, this problem can only get worse. SpaceX posted an update on their website with the uh, details of the failure. It's not completely clear from the description if this is something they can fix in software, like just you know, start speeding up sooner, or if it's a fundamental limitation that the satellites just don't have enough thrust to overcome this additional drag caused by the dense atmosphere. If it's a software problem, I'm sure they'll have things updated and, and fixed before the next launch. If it's a physical limitation, we may see SpaceX start to deploy at higher altitudes to reduce the impact of that atmospheric drag or some other solution similar to that to prevent that 50% extra drag from dragging down their satellites. With a launch scheduled for next week, I expect we'll find out a bit more quite soon about how they're going to mitigate for this type of problem. On the one hand, I'm sad they lost so many new satellites with laser links, slowing down the overall rollout. On the other hand, what a great excuse to talk about solar flares and coronal mass injections, Carrington events. In the grand scheme of things, these 40 satellites won't make a huge dent in SpaceX's overall ambitions. But I am really curious about how they're going to mitigate for geomagnetic storms in the future, particularly as we're really approaching that solar maximum when storms get much, much worse. As always, I'll keep you posted whenever I hear more. Thank you everyone for watching. See you next time.